So today, you have heard so clearly in so many different ways the central truth of the gospel message of Jesus Christ. And my message today is, as we, we move towards a time of response here in a moment, is going to be short, simple, and to the point. At the center of what we believe is what Paul has just proclaimed at the beginnings of Romans chapter 8. And if you've ever read Romans chapter 8, it is a centerpiece chapter, chapter in the Bible. You, you heard a, a verse from it in Jacob's story just a moment ago. There's so much in this chapter. And honestly, the whole book of Romans, if we ever decide to do a sermon series on the book of Romans, we're going to be in it for like two years at least because there's just so much here. But right in the middle of the letter, right in the middle of, of the book of Romans, chapter 8, is this truth that Paul begins with these words, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. When I look at Romans 8.1, I see lots of words that stand out. And one right there just glaring at us is the word condemnation. And condemnation not only means the pronouncement of guilt, but also the application of punishment. The, the condemnation that Paul's talking about, and he began this verse with the word therefore, so looking back on all the things he's talked about in the book of Romans to this point, and, and even today we could say therefore, based on all the things we've said and we've sung as a part of our service today, there is no condemnation because of Jesus Christ. The punishment that we not only are guilty of of needing to receive but that that is to be applied for our sin is death paul has said that in romans the wages of sin is death and it's not just physical death it's eternal death it's death that when that that person is walking on the path of death in life is going to carry on in to the next life that they will experience forever but in christ there is therefore now no condemnation and the word now stands out too doesn't it because it signals to us that something has changed something is different now than it was before something is is no longer the way that it was and as paul begins to get into more description in the next few verses about what things were like when there was the law and when people were living under that condemnation and all the things that were in the past he shifts everything to this moment and he says we're not living then we're living in the now and now which is where we exist where we are living in this age of the church now for those who are in christ jesus there is no condemnation the accusation is gone the punishment that is to be applied for our sin is gone because if we are in Christ Jesus, we are living in the now. The old is gone, the new has come, we are a new creation, and now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You all are already doing better than the 8.30 service. I don't know what was up with them today, if it's fall break, but, but they were half asleep. Today is another good day to say amen, all right? So you do it if you feel led. Paul says, in Christ Jesus now, there is no condemnation. Why? Well, he explains further in verse 2, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit has superseded the law that, that only brought about sin and death. And it's important that we understand that Paul is, is not criticizing God's law. God's law, as we read it in Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, books like that in the Hebrew Scriptures— Paul's not criticizing or saying that there was something wrong with the law. The law was good and it was righteous. But what the law constantly did was it, it shined a light on our condemnation and on our sin and on our disobedience and on God's judgment. But the good news of Jesus Christ, again, because we now live in the new, we live in the now, it has shifted the focus that when we are in Christ Jesus, listen, when we are in Christ Jesus, though the enemy might always want us to think about our sin and our shame and our disobedience, what Christ has done for us is give us the good news of the gospel, which reminds us not so much of our disobedience and our condemnation, but rather of the love of God and the grace of God and the mercy of God and the forgiveness of God and the freedom from sin and death that Christ has made possible for us. Why, did, why is there no condemnation? Because Christ has made it possible 
that we can be free from sin and death. We can be free from condemnation. But how then has he done it? Well, Paul says in verse 3, what the law was powerless to do, and again, not because God's law was flawed, but the human beings who were teaching the law and the human beings who were enacting the law, they were flawed. And because the law was weakened by the flesh of human beings, God did for us what we could not do for ourselves. He sent his son in the likeness of sinful flesh. Christ came, and he came to the earth inhabiting a fully human body. He put on flesh like ours. He had blood flowing through his veins like ours. But what Christ did differently than every single one of us is he lived in that flesh as a human being without sin. He never disobeyed the law. That the flesh that he was in didn't weaken the righteousness of God's truth. Christ lived a perfect life. He not only did not sin, but he never failed to do what was right. He modeled for us in his flesh what it is supposed to look like to live faithfully before God. And what the law had been weakened and, and failed to do because of, of flesh, God did for us what we couldn't do for ourselves by sending his son to be a sin offering and i would love to tell you a whole lot about what that sin offering means what that looks like and in a later date i will but what i want you to picture is is for the jewish readers who who read this who heard what paul said when they heard the, the phrase sin offering they would always picture an animal they'd picture a bull They'd picture a goat. They'd picture a ram. They'd picture some, some other, other animal or maybe, maybe grain or something that had to be offered. But they would picture usually something living that literally, you have to watch me to see this, the priests on the Day of Atonement, whenever they would, would, would ask for forgiveness for the sins of the people, the priests would take their hands and ask God to take the sin of the people and literally place it on the animal that would be sacrificed. Or would be let go and what paul is saying is what god did is he took the sin of the people and he laid it not on a bull not on a goat not on a ram but he laid it on christ himself and christ took our sin he took yours he took mine and he became the perfect sin offering that didn't have to come through an animal it didn't have to come in the temple or the tabernacle or in jerusalem but it did so that this perfect sin offering would be accomplished for us, not through religion, not through ritual, but through the blood of Jesus Christ, there is now no condemnation for those that are in him. He became a sin offering, and he, listen, he condemned sin while in the flesh. He did for us what we could not do for ourselves. And for what purpose? Why? Why did God place our sin on Christ? Why did Christ willingly take our sin upon himself, go to the cross, become our sin offering, die for us, be raised again to life so that we can, we can experience the freedom of sin and death? Why did he do this? Well, Paul concludes, he did this in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh any longer, but instead we live according to the Spirit. I've been studying the Bible for many, many years, and many of you have as well, and I still can't say that I perfectly understand how this works. But I can say with all of my heart that I believe this is what God has done for me, and God has done for you, for those who are in Christ Jesus, that he met the righteous requirement of the law through Christ on our behalf so that when God the Father looks at us, when we are in Christ, he does not see our sin, he does not see our disobedience, he does not see our condemnation, he does not see the judgment we deserve. When we are in Christ, therefore, now there is no condemnation. And when he looks at us as sinful as we are, when we are in Christ, Christ is who God sees. He says to us, it's his righteousness that made you righteous. 
you couldn't do this on your own none of us could meet the righteous requirements of the law that's why the law only shone a light on sin and death because everybody fails everybody fails when it comes to the law we've all broken a commandment there's 613 of them probably this morning we've broken one of them somewhere we couldn't do this on our own but the righteous requirement of the law has been fully met in us through christ and because of that listen if you are in christ and if you know that you're a disciple you are a follower of jesus then it is to be true of you and true of me that we no longer walk according to the flesh we walk according to the spirit you heard from galatians chapter 5 earlier in our service you heard this statement that those who are in the spirit can no longer just do whatever they want and the acts of the flesh are really obvious they're they're degenerate things that lead to death in this life and they lead to death in the life to come only in christ are we set free from those things but those who walk in the spirit they don't walk in those things anymore they walk in the spirit because therefore there now is no condemnation for sin i love the way charles cranfield said it he said for those who are in christ jesus there is no divine condemnation since the condemnation they deserve has already been fully born for them by him by christ which means christ has already crucified our sin it's been crucified in him and we then when we die to our sins we say we no longer live in the sins and in the death of our trespasses but we live in him and because there is no more condemnation we also are no longer bound to live by the flesh instead we live by the spirit and here's what paul says later in galatians that the spirit is like this is what christ modeled this is who we who he was and who he is and if we are walking by the spirit and not by the flesh these are the things the spirit produces in us love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control against such things paul says there is no law because those who belong to christ jesus they have crucified the flesh with its passions and its desires and since we live by the spirit let us he says let us keep in step with the spirit here's the way that i like to look at this christ is not demanding of us scripture is not demanding of us perfection because that's a standard we're never going to meet now we are being perfected and at some point those who are in christ when we're glorified we will be made perfect but not because we attained that on our own because he literally brought us there to be at that point what christ demands from us is not perfection what he demands for from us is a walk of becoming more like him that that hopefully as i walk as i journey with the lord the further i get on this journey i am more like christ and less like i used to be and the more i continue to walk down that road and i crucify my sinful desires in my own flesh just as christ did that for me i'm becoming more christ-like and less like i used to be every single day i hope that i'm e becoming even more the new creation that christ has made me and less that sinful evil selfish person that i used to be and that sometimes still creeps back in there in my attitudes in my words in my actions but i know that as the spirit is working in me that's not the person that christ wants me to be and is leading me to be those who are in christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and its desires so since we live by the spirit let us keep in step with the spirit and let us glorify god when we see that he is producing in us love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control because against those things there is no law this is what christ has modeled this is what christ has done therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in christ jesus because jesus christ has done for us what we could not do for ourselves 
Would you bow your heads and as we prepare for our time of invitation and response? Would you just think back with me over the last hour or so on all the different ways that we have talked about the freedom that Christ gives us, the great love that he has for us, and the work that he has done. We've, we've heard it sung to us. We've sung together about it. We've heard it from the scripture in many different ways and from both the Old and New Testament. We proclaimed it through the Lord's Supper. We saw someone say through baptism, Jesus is the Lord of my life. And we've opened the scripture together We've heard of God's faithfulness and deliverance and rescue physically and spiritually. Testimony after testimony has been given today that the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, but that he didn't stay dead. After becoming our sin offering, our sacrifice, he rose again and he defeated sin and death forever. Therefore, now we live in the now. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Today, if you are a person who feels like your life is wrapped up in judgment, and you feel like you're drowning in darkness, of all the things that you think about when you hear the name Jesus, you don't think about freedom because you haven't experienced it. You've not surrendered your life. You've not confessed those sins to him. You've not said to him, Lord, I want to, to start walking with you and be filled with the Spirit and become more like Christ the further I go in this life. If you've never made that kind of commitment and confession today, before you leave, I, I want you to know this opportunity is for you. It's for anyone who says today, I need to come to Christ. That's the only hope I have left. Today, you have that opportunity here in just a moment to step out and to come to Christ. For those who are in Christ, who know you are a follower of Jesus, you're walking as a disciple, Maybe the Lord would speak to you today specifically about walking in the Spirit and the Spirit, the fruit that the Spirit produces in us. Maybe the Lord would even just say to you, those who live by the Spirit, they walk in the Spirit, and maybe that's the word you need to hear today. Whatever the Lord is saying to your heart, would you open your heart to Him in these last few moments and, and allow the Lord to speak and to lead as He sees fit? Lord Jesus, we give you this time for your glory. We pray that as we lifted up your name today in many ways that you would draw people to yourself. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.